Hi folks, this is the second video in which I describe some of the very cool natural features of the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. In this video, I focus on the natural salt lakes that are so common in southern Saskatchewan. I hope to raise your curiosity about these salt lakes and encourage you to slow down and stop to visit some of them as you travel through Saskatchewan. Now, because I am a geologist by training, the salt lakes appeal to me because their formation is part of the recent geological, geochemical, and climate story about the land we now call Saskatchewan. Enjoy as we look at a few of the features of the salt lakes and their ecological, recreational, and commercial importance. Let's start with a very general statement about lakes in Canada. It's safe to say that most lakes across Canada are freshwater lakes. Freshwater lakes contain very low concentrations of salt. Lake Superior is an example of a very large freshwater lake, but there are thousands of freshwater lakes on the Canadian Shield. But across southern Saskatchewan and parts of southwestern Manitoba and southeastern Alberta, there are lakes that are different. Those different lakes are shown using black dots on this image. Those different lakes are saline or salty because they contain high concentrations of salt. So when I speak of a natural salt lake, I'm not highlighting a single place. Rather, I am referring to many salt lakes that occur across southern Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and southeastern Alberta, concentrated in a geographic area that is often called the Great Northern Plains of Canada. To remind us, the general distribution of these lakes is illustrated by the black dots in this image. You might be wondering, what does a salt lake look like? Using this Google Earth satellite image, the larger salt lakes are easy to see. The red arrows point to some of the larger salt lakes in one area of southern Saskatchewan. The salt lakes stand out like a sore thumb because of the white to chalky color of the apron around the salt lake and on the lake bottom. You can see the larger lakes from a satellite, but you don't have to fly over the prairies to see the salt lakes. When driving across Saskatchewan, the salt lakes are easily dramatic and very easy to see along the roadside, as illustrated by Chaplin Lake, seen here when driving the Trans-Canada near the village of Chaplin, Saskatchewan. Incidentally, Chaplin Lake in southwest Saskatchewan is the second largest saline lake in Canada. If you're wondering what is the largest salt lake, that would be Lake Manitoba, located in the province of Manitoba. Now, as a reminder, the white colored material that occurs as an apron around the edge and on the bottom of the salt lake is the salt that catches your eye. That white salt is even more dramatic when seen where the lake has dried out, such as here at Willow Bunch. You almost need your sunglasses to look at it. And again, that salt forms naturally, but more about that later in the video. In some places, like Big Manitou Lake, the salt lake can look like just any other lake, especially in the spring. But as spring drifts into summer and the bright summer sunshine becomes more intense and warms the land, that telltale white apron of salt begins to appear around the edge of the lake. In some other areas, there is no large lake per se. Rather, the white salt covers the low-lying ground and even covers fallen fence posts. So in Saskatchewan, the salt lakes are mostly dotted across the southern part of the province and are easily recognized by the white colored material around the lake edge and on the lake bottom. You may be wondering, what is the salt made of? Well, the type and concentration of components in the salt lakes is unique to each lake, but there are some generalities. The salt around the Saskatchewan salt lakes is not table salt, which has the chemical name sodium chloride. The main salt components of these salt lakes are the elements magnesium and sodium and the chemical compound sulfate. These chemical components combine together to form magnesium and sodium sulfate minerals and those are the salts which occur in and around the saline lakes. You might wonder how salty are these lakes? Well, one way to express the salinity is to measure and report concentration of salts in the lake in terms of parts per thousand. When using that measure, freshwater lakes have a salt concentration of zero parts per thousand, also described as parts per mil. Lakes are considered to be saline when the concentration of salts is higher than three parts per thousand. Think of three parts per thousand as being equivalent to about 90 seconds out of a 24-hour day. 
That is the level above which a leak is considered to be saline. It may be a small number, but it has a big impact on the properties of the lake. Lakes in Saskatchewan range from about zero parts per thousand for a freshwater lake up to about 185 parts per thousand for Chaplin Lake. Ocean has a salt concentration of about 35 parts per thousand. Little Manitou Lake is a dramatic example where its salinity can also reach over 180 parts per thousand. And that is about five times saltier than the ocean. In fact, Little Manitou Lake gets so salty that people can even float on the surface of the water during the summer. Go figure. So lakes in Saskatchewan range from fresh water to quite salty in composition. By now, I suspect you're wondering how those salt lakes and salt deposits formed. Simply stated, there are several conditions that played an important role in the formation of these salt lakes and the salt deposits. Chemical components needed to form the salts had to be present near the lake. Although there is some debate that glacial deposits that cover the land are one source of the salt components. These components needed to be dissolved and moved into the lake. Key also was the existence of an isolated lake in a land depression where no water ran out from the lake. The only source of water into the lake was precipitation from rain and melting snow and perhaps local groundwater. The land depressions may be hummocky land created during and at the end of the last ice age, such as this area seen here that is dotted with small lakes. Many of these land depressions formed when blocks of ice stranded at the end of the ice age began to melt. Geologists call these kettle lakes. They're also locally and informally named as potholes. And the broad area that hosts many of these kettle lakes is called informally the prairie pothole region. Another location for a landlocked lake was a river valley that formed at the end of the ice age. These types of river channels are common in parts of the prairies. They formed when huge volumes of meltwater rushed away from the front of a melting ice sheet glacier or by the catastrophic release of water when an ice dam collapsed. Once the meltwater flow stopped and the river channel started to dry out, segments of that meltwater river channel also dried out, creating isolated pockets of water that evolved to become a salt lake. Climactic factors were also important and included the presence of summer sunshine, persistent summer winds, dry air, and little rainfall, which together created strong evaporation conditions. As summer progresses, the lake water warms and the water evaporates. As the lake water evaporates, salts dissolved in the lake become more and more concentrated and the lake becomes more saline. Eventually over time, the lake water becomes so saline that the salt began to precipitate out as the lake water evaporated and or cooled. That is when the white salt was deposited. So the conditions that create the white salt deposit can be complicated. The salt lakes are important ecological habitats that support many birds and unusual plants in Saskatchewan. The salt lakes also support tiny brine shrimp and insect invertebrates. Together, those serve as important food sources for many bird species. In this video, you can see the small brine shrimp moving around that live in the salt lakes. The abundant food and small salt lakes create ideal nesting, breeding, and staging habitats for resident and migrating birds. In fact, I read the area of Chaplin, Old Wives, and Reed Lakes is considered to be one of the more important inland sites for migratory birds in North America. One of the other very cool features of the Salt Lakes is the presence of specialized plants that only grow around the edge of the very salty lakes. These specialized plants are called halophytes. Halophyte plant species are specially adapted to thrive in the saline conditions that are otherwise inhospitable to most other plant species. One of the most distinctive of the halophyte plant species is named Western Glasswort or Salicornia rubra. It grows in the moist saline substrate apron that surrounds the saline lakes. Later in summer, its presence is marked by its brilliant red color. When seen in detail, the Salicornia rubra is quite amazing. Its red coloring is really dramatic, and to my eye, 
it looks like a foreign succulent. Other halophyte plants thriving on the saline substrate include common arrow grass, oak leaved goosefoot, alkali heliotrope, summer cypress, and horned sea blight. In addition to their ecological importance, some Saskatchewan salt lakes, like Chaplin Lake, are an important commercial source of the mineral sodium sulfate and magnesium sulfate. Although you may not recognize those minerals by name, you likely are familiar with some of the commercial products that use them, like powdered cleansing detergents, pulp and paper processes, glass making, textile and carpet deodorants, and mineral feedstock for livestock. These images show the production area of the Saskatchewan Mining and Minerals Corporation located beside Chaplin Lake. Unlike other mining operations you may be familiar with, this operation does not excavate the minerals from the earth. Rather, the sulfate minerals are extracted from the saline waters of Chaplin Lake through a commercial process involving evaporation. Note, the production of sulfate minerals has been taking place here since 1948. And remember those brine shrimp I mentioned? Well, there's a company in Chaplin named Artemia Canada that harvests those brine shrimp and sells them globally as fish food. So if you drive through Saskatchewan along the Trans-Canada Highway number no. one, be sure to stop in the town of Chaplin and visit the Chaplin Nature Center to learn about the amazing Chaplin Salt Lake. So in this video, I highlighted another natural feature of the province of Saskatchewan, Canada, namely the Salt Lakes. These salt lakes are really interesting to visit, to see shorebirds, unusual halophyte or salt loving plant species, brine shrimp, and just to look at the saline lake itself, especially if you've never seen one before. Or maybe you would like to float on the salty water of Little Manitou Lake near Manitou Beach, or in Big Manitou Lake near Marsden, Saskatchewan, perhaps when the water is a little warmer later in the summer. These Saskatchewan salt lakes are just stunning in my opinion. They are a treat for the eye and for anyone interested in their unusual ecology, their recreational use, and yes, even their commercial use. If you've learned something new, please consider liking or commenting. Those actions let YouTube know there is some value in this video, and I appreciate that. Well, thanks for now and see you later.